With exams coming closer, it can be so easy to get trapped into a storm of emotions. You might be feeling anxious that you haven't completed the tasks you set for yourself. You might be tempted to get on your phone or play one more game of League of Legends. Or you might be disappointed in yourself for not having satisfied your expectations for practice exams. Today, I'll be going through the actions that helped me through my studies in both high school as well as university. There were three steps I took when I need to reset my mind. The first is zoom in, then zoom out. The second is turning unhealthy competition into healthy motivation. And the third is taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture. Let's go through these three steps in more detail. Number one, zoom in, then zoom out. Humans are simple creatures that find satisfaction in completing tasks. But saying that, humans are also easily repelled by completing tedious or complex tasks. This is why it's so important to make your tasks bite-sized and achievable. Now, this can be done by simply splitting a task that has a big goal into smaller actions. For example, this is a checklist I created in preparation for section A of the English exam last year. You can see that I've tried to split up all the different actions that I would have to, to uh, have to take in accumulating to preparation for the exam. So how can you adjust this to the studies you are doing? Start by simply listing all the specific tasks that you need to do. Order them in a chronological list that you have to complete them in and categorize them into subtopics if appropriate. Secondly, step back and identify what the big goal of your tasks are. What are you working towards? A weekly topic test or a pop quiz? And what do these smaller tasks accumulate to? An end of year assessment or a semester exam? Know what you need to work towards. Finally, and most importantly, you need to be able to stay accountable to the plan that you've created. Now, instead of creating a daily schedule and you know putting down four or five tasks to do every day, I would instead create a weekly goal. Now, all the tasks that you've listed before must contribute or relate to one goal, which is connected to a smaller assessment that you have, for example, that pop quiz or the topic test. And there should be a secondary goal that is more so down the track, but more important than that smaller goal, such as the semester exam or the end of year assessment. The pair of weekly goals should connect to the big task and the small task, and they should be the motivator behind the tasks that you've listed down. So the reason I didn't allocate tasks in each day is because that's a really easy way to procrastinate. And it's really easy to get into the mindset of, oh, you know, this is too much to do in one day. I'm just going to push this over to the next day. So instead, having a larger, vaguer goal at the end makes it a bit more approachable to actually achieve some of these tasks that you've listed. Now, a big warning is that there's a very fine line between planning and over planning. Stop when you think you have listed all possible tasks that accumulate to those big and small goals. Now, do not put them into time slots because you won't stick to them anyway. Rather, do the tasks according to how free you are at a certain time. At the same time, though, it's really easy to fall into the trap of spending way too much time for one task. So what I would do is I'd set myself a specific maximum amount of time that I would spend on this specific task. If I don't complete it all in that time, then I have to move on to the next task. So for example, let's say that I had a two hour free time block that I was going to spend on doing my homework. Uh, if I had four different tasks that I was trying to aim to achieve by today, I would uh, set myself to do 30 minutes for each of those subjects. If I finish the first task within 30 minutes, great job, I'm going to move on to the second one. But if I took longer than 30 minutes, I would cut myself off at 30 minutes and move on to the next one, even if I wasn't finished with that one. But having that kind of mindset where you're going to move on to the next one instead of, you know, do this until I'm finished with it um, helps you distribute your time more evenly and make sure that you touch all of your tasks rather than completing one by one, which will just make you procrastinate further and just make the tasks accumulate for the next week. Number two, know how to convert unhealthy competition into motivation. I'm sure all of us have had the experience of comparing ourselves to other people. Being competitive is commonly seen as a toxic and unhealthy trait because of the impact it has on our mental and emotional health. But with self-control, 
we can convert these emotions into powerful fuel for us to do even better in our studies. I want you to do two things. The first thing I want you to do is identify your competitors' strengths. What is it that makes them get better results than you? Is it their initiative? Is it their time management? Is it their confidence? Use these traits to guide your self-improvement in a more objective way rather than getting clouded by those toxic emotions that might make you feel even worse than you already were. The second thing I want you to do is reflect on your own weaknesses. It's really important for us to regularly stop and reflect on our own progress. There will always be things that we need to improve on and a lot of those things can be solved if we aren't lazy. Now fortunately, competition is a really valuable source of motivation. So try to use that competition to make you overcome that laziness and actually take the initiative, manage your time more wisely and become more confident in yourself as well. Once you've done those two things, I want you to try to take a third step. Don't be afraid of communicating and working with your competitors. If you're scared that by helping them, you might be giving your opponents an advantage. Remember that teaching others is the most effective way to learn. A study by National Training Laboratories found that teaching had the highest retention rate of 90% in comparison to reading, which was 10%, and saying things out loud, which was 20%. So don't be afraid to make study groups and set up weekly Zoom calls for you guys to revise content, ask questions, or go through classwork together. If you still feel uncomfortable with working with those competitors directly, ask your teacher for examples of high scoring responses that your competitors may have been likely to produce. Now, this conversion of competition into motivation is only effective if we continue to stick to it for a long period of time. This motivation can easily turn into toxic competition again if we don't stay accountable. And make sure that you articulate your feelings out to someone else for you to also become self-conscious about how you're feeling about motivation and whether or not the tactics that I've recommended are working. Now, an alternative to using competition is to work with your friends instead and create motivation through them. For example, set deadlines to uh, complete certain tasks with your friends. Perhaps make a bet that if you didn't finish a certain task by a certain date, then you would pay each other $10. If you feel like you can't stay accountable with your friends, send an email to your teacher saying that you'll have a certain task done by a certain date, which will prevent you from procrastinating. And step number three, think about the bigger picture. There's a quote I read on Instagram, which says, No one said studying would be easy. But if you can't even focus and study, what will you be able to achieve in the rest of your life? Yeah, that hurt a little bit. Yeah. Studying is definitely not the be all and end all. Whenever I get stressed about a certain assessment or disappointed in the grades that I got, I take a step back and remind myself I shouldn't let this one moment in my 80 or 90 year long life sway my emotions. It's a waste of my time and energy. See if you can use this technique of you pausing this moment, taking a step back and looking at your life as if it was a timeline and realizing how minute and insignificant this specific moment and this specific emotion that you're feeling is in comparison to your whole life. I know that it might be a bit contradictory to what I've been just saying. What you're doing right now forms the basis of what uni course you're going to do, what job you're going to get in the future and where you're going to be standing in just a few years. Studying is more than just a grade or a number. It forms the basis of what we know as human beings. You may have heard from your parents or past graduates that they would do anything to be in our shoes again. Well, keep that in mind for the rest of the year. You may as well do your best in the time of your life that you're just expected to study. Now, I've said this before, but my life motto is YOLO. You only live once. So make sure that you make the most of the time you have on this earth. And as students right now, the only thing we can do is study so that our future is shaped in the best way possible. Hopefully this was some good motivation for you guys. Now let me know if any of these strategies worked for you or didn't work for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
Thank you.